Well, hi everyone. There's another big bridge fire in the United States. This one occurred in Cincinnati on a bridge that goes over the Ohio River. It's called the Daniel Carter Beard Bridge or known locally as the Big Mac Bridge. It's I-471 over the Ohio River. This fire occurred on Friday, November 1st, about 3.20 in the morning. And it was a result of a high intensity fire of a children's playground that was located directly beneath the approach spans to the main span of the bridge. This bridge was constructed in 1976 and most of the damage occurred to the southbound lanes. Now let's look at some of this footage from a local news station. I'll have a link to this video in the description. It's just an unbelievably intense fire. Now obviously children's playgrounds don't go up in smoke for no reason at all. There's a lot of arson associated with these kids playgrounds just due to all the miscreants out there. Local officials haven't indicated what the cause of the fire is, but I'd be willing to bet it was arson of this playground, likely the use of gasoline or some other accelerant that was probably rubber mulch, but certainly the plastic when exposed to an accelerant and ignition can generate tremendously high temperatures, just like a flamethrower unbelievably intense. There were no reported injuries. And you can see the aftermath. So they immediately had to close down the highway in both directions. It took them a day to inspect the northbound lanes and realize that they could reopen the roadway to traffic on the northbound side. Southbound lanes remain closed. And there's a lot of damage to the steel plate girders on the southbound lanes. Here's some footage of what the playground looked like before the fire. A lot of plastic as well as wood. Here's the general location of the project area in Cincinnati. This park's called the Sawyer Point Park, located not too far from the stadium. So let's look at this uh, Google Earth view. We'll just kind of zoom in here. So you can see this area here, we're coming up on the approach to the southbound lanes. You can see the paving for the pickleball courts, the green paving further up from this playground past the location of the bridges. So the Wikipedia entry for this bridge says, this bridge is a twin span steel bowstring arch bridge. And that corresponds to the main spans crossing the Ohio River. And as I mentioned, the approach spans are supported by steel plate girders. Now we've seen numerous fires associated with highway bridges in the last couple of years. We seem to have one about every six months these days. Here's some pictures of the aftermath of the fire in the playground. Again, to me, this is no doubt an arson. Question is, well, obviously they have to confirm whether it's ar arson, but they also need to figure out who did it and why. I mean, was this just a, another playground arson or did whoever set the fire realize that it was going to cause significant damage to the bridge and result in its closure. And again, I don't know what kind of mulch was present at this playground, but it's quite common that recycled rubber from tires or shoes are, are used in these playgrounds. Obviously very combustible if you can get the temperature up high enough, which you could using an accelerant. Some of this recycled rubber, particularly from tires, is known to contain carcinogenic chemicals. So I think the use of recycled rubber tires for kids playgrounds is falling out of favor. Here's an example of a fire underneath the highway overpass. This was in Norwalk, Connecticut in May of 2024. Very intense fire. You're looking at a shorter section of bridge than involved in this case here for the Big Mac bridge. But again, a very intense fire. They were able to get that bridge replaced in about an 80 hour period, which was amazing. But those bridge spans consisted of reinforced concrete with steel plate girders that no doubt have to be replaced on the southbound lanes of the bridge. Typical fabrication time is on the order of eight to 10 weeks. So I would assume that the DOT there still has their drawings. They know the details associated with these girders so they can go right out and specify the lengths and the section sizes and everything else. But again, it takes time to fabricate it. I don't see a way that they can bring in temporary supports or false work uh, that would permit traffic for going over this damaged section of the southbound lanes. I think the, the girders are just too far gone. 
So they're going to have to remove that section of bridge deck, remove those damaged girders, fabricate and transport new girders to the bridge location. So I think you're looking at a closure of the southbound lanes for at least a couple of months under the most optimistic set of circumstances. Then again, we had this fire in Philadelphia last year on I-95. This occurred in June of 2023. They managed to get this roadway reopened in Philadelphia in under two weeks. And then in November 2023, there was that massive fire due to all these uh, ignited materials that were being stored under the I-10 freeway in Los Angeles. It was a very intense fire and it took the roadway out of service for a couple of weeks. They got it back into service by installing these uh, false work structures. They installed these wooden false work structures to support the bridge girder and deck. Again, a massive amount of damage. So pretty much just a year ago, almost exactly, to this current fire in Cincinnati. So now we're going back to seeing some of the aftermath of this fire on the Big Mac Bridge. You know, when reinforced concrete is exposed to high temperatures, and you're probably talking about temperatures in excess of two or 3,000 degrees easily here to cause that kind of damage to the steel plate girders. It also ignited some utility pipes that were underneath that bridge but extremely intense fire. There's, you know, that time frame of a couple of months, that's assuming that they don't have to replace any of the concrete piers supporting uh, these spans at this location. I'm just assuming that it's strictly a replacement of the, of the span itself, but we'll have to see. They're gonna have to get in there and do a rigorous inspection to figure out what they're up against for sure. So I'll continue to follow this story. The U.S. needs to figure out how to make these bridges less prone to these types of, of fires. I mean, these fires can be devastating and the impacts to commuters due to these sudden closures is, is even greater. I don't understand why somebody didn't put two and two together about, hey, there's a, a playground directly underneath these bridge spans and if someone burns the playground down as they often do in too many cases, what would it do to the bridge? And uh, just in general, I mean, we've, you can't necessarily ban gasoline tankers from going over your bridge, but you can keep people from storing materials underneath these bridges like they were allowed to do in Los Angeles uh, on I-10. So again, it just seems like whether we're talking about ship bridge pier collision or storing materials under a bridge or having material that is prone to high combustion temperatures directly beneath, directly beneath a bridge, it, people don't seem to register that, oh, well, that can happen here. You know, it happened there, but eh, we're good here. So I think this has to be examined on a more comprehensive basis across the country. So let me know what you think in the comments section. I wanna send a shout out to the channel members. I really appreciate your ongoing support, as well as those of you who provided super thanks. That's another great way to support the channel. I'm gonna roll credits at the end. Also, I wanna mention this book here that I just read recently, A Field Guide to Lies, Critical Thinking with Statistics and the Scientific Method by Daniel J. Levitin. I'll put a link in the description if you wanna check this out. But uh, it goes over things that are very important in terms of being a consumer of data, statistical data whether it's for a political campaign, medical test results. And uh, it just, I think, is a great book to help people improve their critical thinking skills, which is always a good thing to do if you can. You know, I can't quite believe it, but I heard a recent news story where a third of Americans can't name all three branches of government. I know there's a lot of sharp people that watch these videos on this channel, so I, I'm sure you're not among that 33%, but it's always interesting to me, you know, what the state of critical thinking is here in the United States in terms of scientific and engineering matters. And I think we can always do more on an individual and a collective basis uh, to improve those thinking skills. So again, this book is just part of that if you want to check it out. Thanks a lot, everyone, and please stay tuned for future videos.